Hey, what's up? I'm Alcox. I make games, play games, and everything in between. Then I thought it'd be cool to show you the process I went through to make my game for the BuildBox Game Jam. I've recorded over 12 hours in super time-lapse mode, which thought this would just be a cool way to see how you go from the beginning idea to the finalized game. I started out with the pool template and I wanted to make something kind of like golf in a way where you just hit the ball into the hole. And we can see I used a cylinder, built some kind of ramps, basically trying to make the gameplay feel realistic. Then of course I got bored which is pretty common when making a game. So I just went to do something completely different, use the draw template, and you can see how everything kind of worked together as a goalie. And then of course I got bored of that again and wanted to make something more like mini golf or putt-putt golf. But with BuildBox, it's kind of complicated in how the objects look and they just kind of look bland. Eventually, I stopped trying to pursue the mini golf, but I was always using the pool template. I do think the pool template is pretty unique in the slingshot feature. Later, I would come to find out that the slingshot feature is pretty bad on the phone. That's primarily because where you touch and pull is really difficult. We can see that I made like a target practice where you shoot and you aim and try to take out that target practice. Maybe even do multiple target practice. Again, just having fun in the game development process. Right there, you just saw, sometimes I have issues. So whenever I find issues, I'll just start over from scratch. I find that's a good way to fix any problems that I may have missed. Also along the way, I try to save as much as possible saving new versions with detailed names so that it's not confusing and it makes sense when I look at it later. And after all the slingshot modes, I went to try to make a game kind of similar to Angry Birds is what I was going for here. I wanted to be able to have a ball that you shoot into a house or whatever and destroy the house. We can still see that there's pipes because I was still toying with the idea of having the ball go into the pipe. This was a really cool feature where I, would, I actually learned something brand new and what I learned was how to create an object on the UI screen that affects objects in the game. So that was something unique that I didn't really implement in the game at the final end but something new that I did along the way. And I think that when you're making a game, a lot of things are difficult to be open with the frustration that comes with learning something new. The main thing there, you saw that the house is actually on kind of a rounded cube. I prefer to use cubes or actual objects instead of plane. A plane is super thin and if an object is moving really fast, it's possible that the object can go straight through the plane. Here we can see I'm kind of leaning back to the target idea, leaning back to the house idea. Basically nothing is completely solidified in what I want to build out yet. This will come in time, but right now I'm still trying to figure out what is a fun game mechanic. And that's the whole idea. If you can get a fun game mechanic, then you just want to build that out into a full-fledged game. Because in hyper-casual games, the game mechanic is one of the most important things. It needs to feel easy, simple, and very intuitive so that when you pick up the game, you can just start playing. Here I'm playing around with the physics of the ball. The ball has physics, so I'm trying to make it bounce off of things while also colliding into the house. And as you can see, I have multiple worlds that are not labeled which will obviously get confusing down the line. And there, here is where I first developed the pipe. And I thought the pipe was cool because it's just very classical when it comes to Mario Brothers, everybody recognizes the pipe. And it, just by seeing the pipe, you kind of already know what to do. The next step, I was thinking carnival games. And in carnival games, you're always trying to make it into like one of the little bottles. I just started building out a level. This is more than like five hours into it. Still not as focused. That's what happens when making a game. Your ideas just kind of go all over the place. And eventually you need to 
solidify and pick one idea and just kind of follow it along. I find the game making process is a lot of fun, but a lot of times it just gets my mind to think of all the things I can do instead of being focused on completing a game. That's why it's good to be open and flexible when making something new. This was a fun idea I had in which the player would roll across a platform and then you can also move that platform. We can see that I kept the pipes. We'll see those pipes in the final version. And next I was just playing with the movement of these cubes get the game feel to just kind of feel more natural. One of the great things I like about Boatbox, moving around the 3D environment, you can just see everything happen in real time, which is pretty cool. This will not come to fruition. I was using multiple rotation nodes, custom nodes to help evolve the ball to move dynamically. I'm always fascinated with dynamic objects because I think they're just really cool. I think when you have a dynamic object in a world on your phone, it's just so much more fun. Here, I just tried to take that original idea of moving cubes and streamline it to a level game where the ball just moves to the end. I never get it working or feeling the way I think would be best, but it's cool to see everything happen in super fast mode. Also played with the hardness, the incandescent for the lighting, and then later I enabled the fog. Originally I didn't have the fog on, because I wanted to see how the level looked fully. And then I realized by having the fog on, it just makes everything look better even when testing. At the end, I decided to just keep things super simple and stick with the slingshot mechanic where you aim into a pipe. And this is kind of where the game starts to get a little bit more focused. Oh wait, no, I'm still trying to make a level where you can move both the character and I think I was using a touch move on those cube pieces. Basically, I was trying to do three things at once and when you do that, sometimes nothing works. You have to take things away. And while visually, I thought everything looked cool, practically, it just didn't make a good game. Like this, <laughs> this was not fun. This was just kind of like, okay. Here is where I make the final ramp, I believe. Oh, no, I'm still trying to make some kind of a, a bouncing game where you shoot the ball and it bounces on the cube and then the cube goes into the pipe. This was a lot of playing with the mass, the bounce, physics. Later, I tried to use Blender to make a rounded pyramid. I never did figure that out. Because I had multiple worlds saved and ideas saved, I am able to jump around those worlds, grab objects, grab nodes that I've created, and put them into the new world I was developing. Here we can see everything is finally coming to a conclusion on how I have it all set up in terms of the ball being dynamic, bouncing off of cubes while trying to aim it into the pipe. Getting this core mechanic down will lead me to level design. Did a bunch of random nodes on random nodes, which is something I've learned recently, and the more I do it, the better I get at it. And you basically just want a lot of randomness. You have to utilize the node in order to achieve a fully feeling like random game, as opposed to cubes can only move in one of three directions. If cubes can move in eight different directions, you won't notice a pattern. Sometimes I have connectivity issues that to me is normal when working within BuildBox. UI is always super important because if the player doesn't instinctively know how to play the game, you want to give them as much help as possible, which in that moment I use the auto hide feature, which shows objects and then will hide them after 0.5 seconds. Here's just more level design, trying to get everything to just feel a good game, like a solid game that's not so random. And with all the cubes moving around like they do, it was very difficult to get a friendly game feel. It was more combative, more the ball would not go where I wanted to go. And so you don't want players to feel frustrated 
You want players to play your game and just kind of instinctually know what to do and enjoy the game. They shouldn't get frustrated over the fact that there's too much bounce, there's too little bounce, things like that. I have multiple worlds going on at this point. Something kept happening where I would make a change, and then the whole game would just not function properly. So we can see I'm just building out a world and I'm just making levels, which of course is the most fun ever. Making levels and trying to be creative and different in each level, it ignites the imagination. This is what I'm doing. I'm just moving the pipe around while creating the blocks all around the pipe. And the blocks are actually set up to move randomly. While they all kind of look marshmallowy next to each other, they don't look that way when you hit play. They all move randomly. Very cool feature that I set up was that they move when you are not touching the screen. But if you are touching the screen, then the cubes don't move. Or wait, was it reversed? Anyways, oh, this was a really cool part where I laid out just by using text, almost kind of like a bowling lane. So this is what I was thinking here in terms of a bowling lane. Now, when you go bowling, you'll have those markers and cues to help you figure out where you need to aim. That is what I was thinking of with those lines behind the ball because you can drag and pull back if you're off by a little bit then you can know where to move your finger in order to hit the pipe correctly and that you I was having just there that the pipe didn't balance I have one cylinder and then two cylinders but the way the 3d objects work if they're all in one object then it only counts the main objects physics the top end of the pipe had no physics i didn't like that i wanted the ball to be able to touch the top of the pipe and bounce off bounce to the left not just bounce through nothing so here we can see i'm just making some more level and i was trying to go with the theme where it's almost like the pipe is completely surrounded by the cubes that way if you get close enough you can Cross your fingers a little bit in the hope that the ball gets in the pipe. Here's where I make the levels where it's just cubes kind of making levels. These cubes are more stationary. They do not rotate like the ones that I had made previously. And I try to make them visually different in terms of how they look. These are more rectangular where the other cubes are just solid squares. And then more level design. I'm just moving the pipe around along with the cubes. And this is where I noticed that when in making the level I used the fog but also wanted you to be able to kind of see your target from the launch pad before I hadn't done that I was just making the levels as fast as I could and then I realized that, hey wait a minute if I do this then it will look more appealing when you start off from here is where I created the levels and paid attention to exactly what you could see from the beginning of each level. Just finalizing the game over UI. This game has points, maybe? I don't really know. I haven't figured out the point system. I was trying to do something where if you touch the cube, you get a point, but for whatever reason, it didn't really work. It just wasn't able to keep track. Obviously, you can't have an unreliable point system. The game presently doesn't really have points unless I'm able to get it to start working. Why it doesn't work, I'm not exactly sure. I think it has something to do with the sphere around the ball and how it comes into contact with the cube. The last part was probably one of the most difficult and that was just getting everything to match up from level one to level 27. I ended up making 27 levels and during the process of making this game, I had multiple worlds. Now, the game will eventually be all in one world because to me that process just made more sense but here we can see I'm just trying to get everything to work properly from level one to level two to level three and it just wasn't working the way that I would like. There I finalized the UI screen. My thought was the first couple of levels should be extremely easy. When I was making these levels, I was just making them for fun. Didn't care about the difficulty or the hardness. Now that I have the gameplay mechanics pretty much figured out, the next step was to make the first few levels ridiculously easy because the last thing I want is somebody to play the game and get frustrated and 
stop playing. Best way to do that is make the first 10 levels extremely easy. Now this is oddly enough before I knew how difficult the touch play mechanic is on the phone. The slingshot just doesn't work that great on your finger and on the phone. It sometimes doesn't even work at all. And overall, I wouldn't recommend using the slingshot template until it improves. And from here, I'm able to actually get things working the way I want. It looks like I still have multiple worlds going on. I have a lot of fun just recording the screen. I think the game dev process is a strenuous one. And so being able to watch everything super fast kind of makes me feel like a superhero or something. Even though all this is about 12 hours of footage. And you can see there's a lot of nodes going on on that slingshot character. It's best to try to stay as organized. There is where I started making some confetti, which basically when the ball goes in the tube, it explodes with confetti. Very cool stuff. And you can do that just with an if collide equals debris and make that debris confetti. Here is where I'm just going through all the different levels and numbering them accordingly on the platform. Actually, I remember here, everything is actually going to crash and I'll have to redo all of that I just did uh, when it comes to building out the last level. There we saw it was up to level 30, but the final game will have 27 levels. I don't know what happened to the last three levels. I'm not going to worry about it if you don't. Oh, and this is where I set up the confetti. Basically, I put this object, which you can see is a ball on top of the pipes. You won't be able to see that in the game, but there is a ball in the game. And if the slingshot hits that ball then explosion confetti and i had to do that manually i wanted to try to find a shortcut to do it but sometimes i feel i spend more time looking for shortcuts than just doing it the hard longer way that i know will work on all levels that was the code the level counter which actually doesn't work well it might work. I have no idea if it works or not because I can't get to level 27 when I try to drag my character. Like I can't, I can't get it. I can't. So I'm stuck on level four. I'm pretty excited to be finished with this game. After this video, I'm gonna take screenshots and upload everything to the app store so you can download and test it play it. And if you watch this whole video, thanks for watching. Do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Watching 12 hours of a game dev process this is kind of cool. This was a lot of frustration all along the way. And I would say my favorite thing is making levels. I'm super excited to finish this game, upload it to the app store because I already have another game idea in mind. That game is not going to make itself. So until next time, peace.